Welcome to Schmooze with Suze. I'm Suze Montgomery, your host. Wow, this one's a really great show. I've been really excited about doing this because I went to it one time, but I went to the only the one in Santa Barbara once before. But now I don't have to drive the freeway because I can come in my own backyard for even a better show. So I've got Barbara Hinton with me, and Barbara represents the Ventura Street Painting Festival, correct? Ventura Art and Street Painting Festival. Oh, I forgot the art part. Okay, so this is, it's, you do, you sell art there. Also, they have people that, well, let's start at the beginning. Okay. Let's back up. Start at the very beginning. How did you start doing this? You know, I... Because you're a school teacher. I was a school teacher, and I retired after 10 years, and I did some various things. I was in staffing sales, and I think it goes back to about 06, 2006. The city of Ventura wanted to be the new art city, and... You know, there's all this excitement <laughs> around art. And um, I thought to myself, well, you know, they want to be the new art city, but they don't have an art festival. True. And I had just come back from um, Laguna, the big festival they oh, have that's there. A beauty. Focus on the. Uh, that's been going on for how many years? Years. 30, maybe. Okay. And so um, I think at the time I was um, volunteering, I, I was a chamber member, my, fa my husband's uh, business. You know, I was a chamber member, and I was going to certain meetings on behalf of his business. And they were talking about needing a new event or wanting to stage a new event. And I was just really passionate that I thought Ventura should have an art festival. And so I started pitching the idea to them, and the then CEO, you know, poo-pooed it. And um, once they got somebody in there to replace her, well, there was a little crossover. She was still there, but the marketing person prevailed upon her to let us try it. So this Nancy? other, uh, no, it was uh, Zoe at the time was the CEO. Ooh, so the marketing it. person at the time and, and I literally just, you know, d put it together. We tried different things. Um, we, at one point we thought we'd have it at the Mission because as you know, in Santa Barbara, the big chalk festival yeah, there is at the Mission. the Mission. And the father at the time um, was all for it, but then one of his um, superiors, you know, put the kibosh on it. And so then, you know, we're like, okay, what should we do? So um, the chamber finally got behind it. So we had their backing and support. And we started trying to find artists. And anyway, long story short, 2009, the first, it was called the Ventura Art Festival. We had 20 artists. Um, we had bands. We had like four or five bands throughout the day. Where'd you do this? We did it in Mission Park. Across from the mission. Right. Across, ironically, across from the mission, yeah. which is where we talked about so um, yeah, we had this tented event, and it was it was very elegant, but you know, not very many people came. So, um, but that's because anything new in Ventura. Right. But you know, I'm proud do. to say I am so proud to say we we made like a hundred dollars. We we've never lost money. <laughs> well, hey, that's a I plus know. in this town. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, we we regrouped uh, kind of halfway through the day because we were charging admission, and that wasn't working. So then we just started letting people in. Um, but the funny part is, this was back in 2009, um, we had a celebrity visit that year. Larry Hagman showed up. Really? Yeah. Just yeah. wandered in or he knew? Well, we had seen him at a, an event that we had attended in Thousand Oaks. It was an event for KCLU. And I, I um, sort of dared my husband to go talk to him and give him one of our flyers, so he did. And he actually showed up with his wife. Wow. Yeah, and, um, and the, the cool thing is, 
Um, he went to every, he visited every artist's booth. Wow, how yeah. wonderful. And a couple years later, I saw one of the artists that had been in our show, <clears throat> excuse me, and he said, he still had, he, Larry would hand out these, like, they look like dollar bills with his picture in the middle. <laughs> he didn't do autographs. He didn't like to shake hands, but he would give you one of these dollar bills. That's and this, kind of an interesting affectation. Yes, isn't that interesting? And so this guy, you know, he said, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. And he wanted to show me he still had that. Wow, that, he um, saved it. JR dollar, I don't know what to call it. And, um, yeah, it really meant a lot to him that, 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 that he'd been there. And, well, that's kind of yeah. impressive that a celebrity, you know, he lived in Ohio, I believe. Yeah. All right? Yeah. But it's impressive that he would actually take time to go speak to each individual artist. Mm -hmm. He hung out at the bar and... <laughs> oh, there's not a big surprise. <laughs> He's gone, we can say this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But it, that, So that was kind of neat. And then after that first year, we, we sort of had to regroup. You know, you evaluate what worked and what didn't work. And Part of what we, we realized is if you're driving by on Main Street, you can't see what's going on in that park from the street. No, it's true. It's because, really hidden. Because so. the park slopes down and exactly. the street is elevated. Yeah, I could see where so, that was. So, yeah, we decided, you know, that wasn't the best. So then we went over to Plaza Park by the post office. Okay, better? It was better. Um, and then um, year three came along and um, there were some things going on in the city Long story short, we uh, it, it didn't become workable to do it in a park again, um, and so that's when somebody said, "Why don't you go talk to the folks at the Ventura, you know, Port District and see if you can do it at the harbor?" So we did. Did you work with Oscar? Um, Oscar is very supportive of the event. He, uh, Oscar's a doll. He used to He's be a my great. neighbor. He's a great guy to work yeah. with. Now they're part of the city, but separate, right? Well, they're the, that they're work? a port district, and I don't I don't understand how that all works. But they are like a separate district. Okay. So the city doesn't have anything to do with oh, that okay. land there, and so, so I work with his, his staff. Decision. Yeah. Okay. And he's just been very supportive of the event, you know, for, for which him. I'm grateful. It's it's a nice, and um, it brings people out, and it works for the merchants there. Now so. you do this every year, the same Yearly. time every year. Yeah, and you and that's kind of changed as the event has evolved. Right now we're in September, okay. which is a nice time of year generally. It was hot last year, but okay. Yeah. And so you charge admission? Uh, we don't. Um, not really? after that first year, we tried that. Remember, <laughs> I said it that didn't, didn't work. work. Okay. So no uh, bar. <laughs> it, no more bar. Yeah, because then you have to have police there. Liquor you know, license couple, rope it off. Yeah, then and that is an added yeah. expense. And so when we left the park and went to the harbor, part of the arrangement with the harbor district was they said, you know, we don't want you to do the alcohol, and you, we don't want you selling any food because we oh. had food booths. Okay. And I was just as happy to agree to that because then you have to have the health department and, you know, with the alcohol and the food. So that just eliminated Are you a another... nonprofit? Or no? Yes, and that's that's a new thing that happened along the way. Um, when um, I, you know, we stopped working with the city. Well, at, in 2012, the chamber decided they didn't want to, um, you know, sponsor the event. And so I thought, well, now the thing is, you know, has legs and it's it's yeah. it's growing. And and I thought, well, what you know, hmm, what do I want to do? I don't want to just quit doing it. And so um, I, I just had this idea uh, to talk to Bonnie Atmore over at Foodshare. And so I sort of did it as a freelance for them for a couple of years. Oh. And then last year um, we started our own our own nonprofit. So you got a board and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. Wow, Barbara yeah, Reno. I know, look where I... Wow, you started out this for fun, and now it's become... Actually, you probably mm -hmm. have... Do you have to work on it, like, year-round? Not really. You know, like, right now is kind of a busy time for me, but, um, you know, you, you do a little tending of it, but it's not... It's not. So do artists find you by other artists? How do people e find you that are want to show their wares, let's put it that well, way. Well, it's a combination. Um, you know, now that I've been doing it for so many years, I, I actually have a nice number of artists that come back every year. That's great. Um, it is, it's it's a real compliment. Um, and I do go to other shows and I recruit people. So I went to a show in Calabasas this year and recruited a wonderful artist that will be there this year. Um, I go to the Ojai show, I go to other shows and talk to people and give them my card. Um, I post it. There's all, all kinds of different places you can post information. Social media, and, uh, yeah, yeah, totally social media. But there are different like uh, websites where it's like a call to artists type website oh. where the artists go there to look for shows. Really? Yeah. It's a whole industry then. 
Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. do these kind of events, now is this chalk art as well on the ground? Mm -hmm. So how it's, does that work? So it started as, you know, just artists showing their work and that was, you know, kind of my on, vision. Like easels or? Uh, in a booth. Um, it, some okay. of them use easels, some of them have pottery, some of them have shelving. Um, so it's, that was how it all started. And then I just got this, I don't even know now where the idea came from. So 2012, I thought, you know, maybe 2011, 2012, I thought maybe we should add some chalk art. Wow. And I, I really don't know how I came to that. And then I thought to myself, I don't know any chalk artists, so how do I you know, do this? And it was one of those things in life where things just came together. I had this friend that was working on another festival in Oxnard, and I was telling her what I was thinking, and she said, at some point she said, oh, this guy you know, contacted us to see if you know, we, he, we would want to do a commission you know, to, to pay yeah. him to do something, and they didn't. But she said, here's his email, why don't you contact him? And the rest, as they say, is history. He did chalk art? He did chalk art, and he had, uh, the first year, he, he got together like 12 other chalk artists, and so the, that was how I started. This was meant to be. I know, it has that feeling, it really did. And so now today, the, the thing has evolved. So what I do is I sell sponsorships of the Chalk Squares. And um, our, you know, our event benefits Food Share and another small charity. So you so. pick out who's the benefactor mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And you're still doing Food Share with Bonnie. Yes. That's great, that's yeah. a good association. She's, yeah. re she's really done amazing things with She food has, share. but it's easy to understand it's food. It's pretty well, and straightforward. It's get, and it's getting worse every year. It's the, the population. Need, the need for food has remained the same uh, throughout this last six years or so. But the population, I mean, mm -hmm. well, well, when you see, especially like single parents, of course, or people that are food insecure, as they put it, right. or then you see seniors. I mean, a huge population of seniors are food insecure. And I think they've got, a, Bonnie's got a new program over there for seniors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be really a big chunk of what she does, too. Yeah. She's taken this from a very small little nonprofit into this thing is huge. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe what she's managed it's quite to make an operation. it grow. I, I, I just went over there for a tour a month ago. I was blown away. Totally blown away. I mean, this is like a huge operation. These yeah. are warehouses, and they get a lot of donations. And there's some things coming down the pipeline that might, <laughs> you might find interesting, but I, I can't address it. Oh, I can't know enough about no, it. She actually asked me about, you know, developing some kind of a partnership with yeah. senior stuff, too. So yeah, you sell these squares, mm -hmm. and you call them sponsorships? Yeah, we put... How we big put are the, they? Uh, well, the smallest is 10 by 5, so 10 feet by 5 feet. That's big. It's big, yeah. And he's got that kind of geography over there? Yeah. There's, you got to come out and see it. I guess so. So yeah. is it around the perimeter of where the restaurants the are? The beautiful where? part of it is that, you know where the grass area is? Yes. That's where the artists put up their booths. Okay. So along there, there you can walk down, you know, to the Ventura Yacht Club along that right. way. Right. So there's all this sidewalk, and it's right on the water. Okay. The water's right there. And so um, the artists love it. The chalk artists, a lot of times chalk art events take place in a parking lot. And so these guys are right on the sidewalk, but the water's right there, and the so boats. So they've got it's concrete beautiful. instead of asphalt. Mm -hmm. You can do chalk art on asphalt. Yeah, you can do asphalt is almost nicer because it's smoother. This sidewalk is pitted, and you know there's. I would have thought that's the other way around. How weird. Well, Imadonari has a really good deal because they um, repave that surface every year for the chalk art event. That's Santa Barbara, right? <laughs> that's the Santa Barbara. So event. they repave it just yeah. for the chalk art. Yeah, and it's like butter. It, it's. Yeah, that's the... How the many, well, how many people crap. do you usually have? I mean, that are actually artists that are working in chalk on the ground. I mean, do you how have many a do, number? Does yeah. my show have? Yeah. About 40. It that's varies a, a little lot. Bit. It is. But, I, you know, and I, somebody said to me a year or so ago, you know, you don't have to be the biggest show. And I thought, yeah, I don't. I want to be more like a boutique show. Yeah, better, yeah, smaller, it's just, um, manageable. Yeah, I, I just have really great people, and it is more manageable because I remember I've got the artists. I have like forty-five to fifty artists too. on the lawn, and I've got the forty street painters. So a hundred-ish, you know. I think I, that's I, I just think that's it'll be special. I think that's big to me. It's yeah. big, especially for that space. But but 
some of the photos that I have are just incredible. You know, this really colorful mural and in the background, you've got the water and the boats. It's a special setting. So how long do they last? I'm dying to find out. Oh my goodness. Um, if you don't touch them, uh, one year I was at the mission. I had some friends, I had family in town actually. The um, event at the mission takes place at the end of May and it was mid July. Of course we hadn't had any rain, right? And some of those images um, up at the mission were maybe 50% or less, but you could still, some of them more so than others, some of them were that gone. That long? They still? Yeah. It was, it was crazy. It was, okay, so yeah. I've seen photographs of the ones, I, I think I attended one of the mission maybe once, and I've seen photographs since then. So the pigments they use are probably a special type of chalk? Or no, just it's, it's chalk the pastel, shelf? so it's got some oil in it. Some of them will lay down some tempera paint because it, it, it's, you What's know, makes tempera? a better, uh, you know, like when you're a kid, you used to paint with paints on a easel, just tempera, it's just a simple, a it's just, a, it's not oil paint. Okay. Um, they'll lay that down to kind of have a, 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 maybe a stickier surface. So that's water-based? Yeah. Okay, so that's just the foundation. Yeah, it's like a foundation. Okay. Um, and then they, you know, start doing the chalking on top of that. And then they last. Interesting. They last, you know, it's not forever. Um, I was out there a couple months after my show last year, and some of them you could still see a bit. Others, depending on, see the grass, they have to water the grass. Oh. So that kills that, off. Yeah, <laughs> goodbye after yeah, a week. Done. And and yeah. Does anybody they, actually ask for areas that are away from the grass? No, you know, and that's, the, that's, I think, the huh. fascination with the chalk art is, you know, these these artists are so lovely because, you know, every other person asks them, well, how, why do you do this if it doesn't yeah. last? You know, doesn't that bother you? And they it doesn't. Um, they have a real passion for it, and that, that's exciting to me, and they're, they're happy to do it and, and move on. Do, so do some artists just do this medium alone and that's it? Or did they do mixed media or even in your, like, when you have your artist in the, you know, in the grassy area. So is somebody like doing both or did they just focus in on one specific It thing? varies, just, uh, they're, they're all different. Um, one gal, a local Ventura gal, she helped me launch this too. Um, I'd known her and we got to talking and I said, you know, I'm thinking about starting, you know, adding some chalk to the festival. And she said, oh, I, I've been to Europe doing chalk and I hadn't known that about her. So she, she's been very helpful to me. So she actually um, has a booth on the lawn that her parents <laughs> run for her while she's chalking and she kind of goes back and forth. So um, someone like her, um, some of them have day jobs and this is just kind of a, a weekend thing. And there's a real camaraderie with these, these people, this So group. they work together well. They just have a shared passion and um, you know, they'll talk to each other about techniques and um, so yeah, your background is business. Randy's background is business. His background is business. I, I, my family, I come from a line of teachers, teachers and nurses. Um, I was a high school teacher for 10 years. Where'd you do this? Um, Oxnard. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, just locally. But you, you're not from this area originally, are Bakersfield. you? Bakersfield. Okay, Bakersfield, so yeah. Bakersfield, Oxnard, Ventura. Not too okay. far. <laughs> no, you're not moving very far. You're no. in the same zone. No. So my mother was an artist, um, is, oh. still, is still creating art at 80. Okay, there's the mm -hmm. tie-in, mm -hmm. okay. She's a fiber artist, so she does quilts and different things with fiber and yarn and things like that. And I, I, ha I'm a, I call myself a part-time artist, a very part-time artist. What do you do? I, I work with fiber mostly. Like um, what? Needle felting, I don't know if you've what heard of it. What is needle felting? Yeah, um, you work with dyed fibers and um, you felt them together. You can make fabric. What is felting? And, well, um, there's, I'm really curious. I know. Now. There's different ways of doing it. You know, um, you can cross hat. You know, you know, simple felt you can buy at the dime store. Just yeah. pieces of felt. Well, you can make that. What you have to do is you have to cross hatch the fibers, and then you can hit it with hot water, and it shrinks. And it, it, if you overlay the fibers, it creates fabric. Okay, me, cross hatch means cutting it oh, in pieces. You just you, you layer it on top of each other this way. Just pieces. Yeah. Without doing chunks, anything else. Chunks of it. Well, you wet it, and then you kind of agitate it, and then you can actually make fiber. That's wet felting. Dry felting is something. What do you different. mean? You make fiber out of this. Well, it just kind of melts together. Fiber. 
Uh, it bonds, it binds together. Just naturally? Yeah, but you, you agitate it, you rub it once you get it hot and soapy. And you can actually make fabric. I've Learned never heard of this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you do with this? Um, you know, I've made purses, um, wall art. Um, Barbara Reno, yeah, I never knew I, this about you. I, no well, way, man. I, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a, a really pr productive artist. I just do it kind of on the side for fun or things like that. Yeah, but you've created things. Yeah. I have. I have. I'm very proud to say um, the last kind of big piece I did, um, I entered it in the Buena Ventura Art Association Open Competition. I was accepted, so that was really big for me. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. Yeah. You buy pieces of felt at like a fabric store. No, well, no, I was just saying, you know, you can buy pieces of felt, but you can create your own felt. You get the loose dyed fiber um, and you cross hatch it, hit it with some hot water, agitate it, and it, it shrinks and it becomes like a Where piece Where do you of buy fabric. the fiber? Um, you can buy it. Uh, I think Anna Kappa Yarn had it. Um, you can even find it at Michael's. But so it's just online is the way to go. <laughs> it's just fiber. It's wool. Okay. Wool or silk. But wait a minute. You're not supposed to wet wool. Because it shrinks. Thus, yes. That's how you get it to... Sh it shrinks and it jo it binds together magically. I never knew that. Yeah. And then what about silk? You just Go mentioned... online, wet felting, you'll see all kinds of and things. And silk is the same thing? Um, silk doesn't shrink the same way. Um, when I work with silk, okay, so that's wet felting. So then needle felting is, um, I guess I'd best describe it. I actually have a machine. It looks like a sewing machine, but you don't use thread. It has, you know, needles that go up and down, and very similar to a sewing machine. So you can take a piece of fabric, you can lay the fibers down, and the needles will punch it through so it adheres to the fabric. I know, it's a whole different wow. deal. Wow, <laughs> I have been totally up. Yeah. Okay, see, I don't, uh, my dad was an artist. My, he was an architect, and my, he died when I was eight, so I, I've got some of his paintings in my office here at work. But I don't have any artistic ability whatsoever. I'm not a creative t person at all. So I'm more analytical. I'm mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. scientific over here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a nerd. Okay, I'm a nerd. <laughs> so I never, and, but I'm always fascinated, and I buy art. I mean, right. my house is full of art. Awesome. And I, I just really appreciate it because I know how, art, how hard artists work. Yes. And the ones that make a living at it, I mean, it's, I mean, it's got to be tough. I mean, especially in a downturn economy to make a living with art. Mm -hmm. So you are doing a couple of things here. You're providing a source of the economy for, for local, yes, increasing the economy because these people come from, I would imagine, all over the place to come to your events, Mostly right? Mostly Southern California. So, yeah, Santa Barbara, yeah, through L.A. So you... Uh, so you're bringing yeah. in tourist mm -hmm. dollars, right? Yeah, absolutely. TOT? Mm -hmm. Okay, tourism dollars. And you're also creating a venue for artists, local and elsewhere, to mm -hmm. come in and mm -hmm. sell their wares. Mm -hmm. This is not just a nonprofit. This is really, this is pretty cool. I, I love doing it. I it's bet. This is a like a passion. gift to the community. Yeah. I it hope really so. is I when hope you so. think about it. <laughs> when you think about it, it is a gift. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not unlike teaching because teaching is kind of a selfless occupation. I mean, you don't get paid a lot of money to be a teacher. No. You got to do it because you love it. And you do this because you love it. I do. I absolutely do. So you found yeah. your milieu. I, d I have. And, you know, I think uh, it's a great lesson for younger people. You know, if you don't know what you're yeah. going to do when you grow up, well, just hang in there, try things. Um, because I, I see myself doing this for 20 more years or so, you know. Absolutely. And I, I mean, it's not. It's a legacy. It's, that, and it's, it's a legacy project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're creating the economy. I mean, you're actually creating jobs for people. You're adding to Trying to help the artists. Lives. Um, giving a lovely event to the community. And I'm very excited to tell you, we're going to be a uh, featured event in Westways Magazine this year. I'm thrilled. How'd Beyond you get thrilled. that? You just try. Do you submit it to the <laughs> yes, newspaper? Yes, yes. I mean, to Westways, yeah. That's the, Westways is? Triple A. Triple A. Magazine. I get it because I have Triple A insurance. You'll, Yeah. This is you huge. Get the magazine. That's, that's a huge. Oh, I think it's huge. Opportunity. They I'm came thrilled. after you, or you just submit? Well, you submit, and I apparently, as I've learned now, um, I was listed last year, 
And apparently you only get listed if someone from um, Westways or AAA has visited the event, is what I was told. Interesting. So then it was interesting at the beginning of this year, I was contacted by a, a travel writer in Santa Barbara. And so later I thought, oh, I wonder if she, you know, she was the one that came. I bet. Yeah. And so huh. she contacted me again and said, you know, we're, here's this questionnaire, fill it out. So I did. So I was the press out to see you? At this event, or well, they apparently they did, but I didn't know it. They'll, they check it out to make it sure it's legit, or I don't know what you know. I'm not sure what the well, they did that is. with Hector when they reviewed Cafe Zach. Well, that's right. That's yeah. right. So it's probably like a secret yeah, diner. It's a secret thing. diner, a secret mm -hmm. yeah, a secret mm -hmm. shopper. Yeah. Wow, this is huge. I know. You're making big time. Yeah. The city of Ventura blew it by not. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> You did better. <laughs> they're they're very good. Um, I you know I I applied for and received a grant from the city last year. Yeah, that's huge. Yes, that's where my English you know major skills came in. <laughs> I could write oh, yeah. a grant. So that was it, like a CBDG grant or an art grant? Um, an arts grant. Mm -hmm. Artists in residence, they call them. No, I this is a different one. Okay. I, yeah, that's huge. They're supporting different arts organizations. Yeah. Well, everybody at home, please, what's the dates? This year, September 10th and 11th. September 10th and yeah. 11th, go out to the Ventura Harbor. It's a free event. Get an ice cream cone, <laughs> eat dinner, walk around. What time is it? It's 10 to 5. 10 to 5, yeah. manageable. Mm -hmm. Okay, go out mm -hmm. there, support this. this I'm going to be there. This is just, I think this is fabulous. I haven't been, you know, to see yours. Like I said, I only went up the one uh, in Santa Barbara, so now it's my turn. Say hi to Randy. I will. And thanks Thank for coming you for having on the me. show. And thanks for joining us. And uh, wow, I can't believe all these wonderful opportunities and the resources we have in the city of Ventura. We do. And if you don't watch the show, you don't know. So <laughs> come back and join us again. We'll see you next week. <laughs>